What's up, Bengal fans? It's your host, Joey Carney. I want to thank you for clicking on this video. It was an amazing experience, and I can't wait for you to see the full interview. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below your favorite part at the end of the video. Now, enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, The Angle proudly presents the world's most talked about pro wrestling sensation. This is Kevin Owens. It's the Angle Podcast. How exciting! What's up, Angle fans, and welcome to the Angle's WWE Backlash post show, where we'll be discussing everything that happened at WWE Backlash heading into Monday Night Raw. I'm your host, Joey Carney, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below to stay up to date with all the Angle's activity right here on YouTube. While witnessing the greatest wrestling match ever, there were still other matches on the card that were pretty amazing in itself. One of those was Jeff Hardy versus the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, in which Sheamus collected the win. This match was exactly what I predicted it to be. Brutal, aggressive, hard-hitting, and well, with the Sheamus victory. Jeff Hardy did his best to try to prevail over the Celtic Warrior, but unfortunately, after a few bro kicks, the 1-2-3 got Jeff Hardy caught up. I do have to say there were some spots in that match that I was afraid for Jeff Hardy's well-being. It was a scary, uh, overall, an entertaining match, I have to say. One of the best on the card, Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus. Sheamus getting the victory. Another match that took place actually started the show, and that was the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship, the triple threat match featuring the champions Bailey and Sasha, the Boston Hall Connection, taking on the Iconics and Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. This match showed so much development for the Iconics, but also for Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Ultimately, the Sasha, uh, Sasha Banks and uh, Bailey retained their titles, uh, but this one was really entertaining. It was great to see such development of the Iconics, like I said, but it was also great to see some new moves by uh, Alexa and Nikki Cross. I have to say I'm very, very impressed with the women's tag team division. Uh, currently, after WrestleMania, we, they've been getting more TV time. We've seen the titles more elevated, now being on the SmackDown Women's Champion and Sasha Banks. Uh, I, I can see the light for these titles. It was a little while before that I really didn't think that these titles would exist. Um, in a time like this. So I'm excited to see if the titles are developing, if there's characters that are backing those titles to help get that done. So like I said, another match that I really did enjoy was the triple threat match, the women's tag team titles. Now if we're going to talk about some of the best matches on the card, there is no doubt in my mind that we can leave out the WWE Championship match featuring the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre getting the retaining title win over Bobby last year. Now we saw MVP at ringside with Bobby Lashley. We thought maybe there would be some sort of inter uh, involvement. Very, very little, uh, close to none. But at the end of the night, it was Lana who made her way down to the ring. It ultimately cost Bobby Lashley his first shot at the WWE title in over 13 years since his first run with the WWE. This match was hard hitting. This match was back and forth. It's not often that we see Drew McIntyre manhandle. It started off the match with a full Nelson, almost making Drew pass out. We didn't think that it would be uh, this match would come into fruition uh, at the beginning of the match because Bobby Lashley took him out before the bell rang. It was an incredible, incredible, incredible match. Very predictable uh, finish, though. We did realize early on that Lana would probably interfere after the backstage segment with MVP but that was the most predictable part of the match. Um, I did predict that Bobby Lash, uh, that Drew McIntyre would retain the title, uh, but it was an entertaining match uh, besides that. I'm really, really happy with, with the way WWE is booking Drew McIntyre, especially holding the WWE title. We said on the pre-show that uh, this is a new wave for WWE. This is a new direction. We see Apollo Crews holding a title. We see Drew McIntyre leading the Raw brand holding its main title, the WWE title. This is a great, great way to represent the brand, uh, but also to further the WWE's uh, 
success. I think Drew McIntyre as WWE Champion is one of the best decisions WWE has made in the last couple of years. And it is only a matter of time before we see him in a bigger, bigger feud heading into SummerSlam. So like I said, another match on this card with the WWE Championship match, Drew McIntyre retaining his title over Bobby Lashley. Now, tonight on Monday Night Raw, we don't necessarily know what's gonna happen. There are some speculating rumors all on social media. Uh, they're saying maybe Rusev shows up tonight. Who knows? He can be involved with Bobby Lashley and Lana. There's a lot of rumors circulating right now on social media about what we're gonna see on Raw tonight. I don't really care what the rumors say. If any of them are true, I'd be happy, especially being having a new direction for Monday Night Raw. Paul Heyman being fired, Bruce Prichard being put in charge of both Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown Creative. We will see if this is uh, a great decision going forward. Honestly, SmackDown Creative has been better to, in, in my eyes. Raw hasn't been that great. We saw some with the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders at last night's Backlash. I was completely devastated. I did not understand what was happening. We saw the combination of the two teams, the Viking Profits, Akira Tozawa joining on a on a motorcycle, there was ninjas, there was uh, turkey legs being thrown, there was some Dragon Ball Z references. I wasn't sure what was happening. To me, the first few minutes of it was entertaining. I was expecting to see a title match that was advertised on the card hours before the show started. So I was kind of disappointed in that. But uh, this was the, the segment of the night that I just, I couldn't believe uh, was happening, especially on a WWE interview. I was, like I said, completely devastated. I did not enjoy this. It went on way too long. And if you look back on the last five weeks, we've seen a lot of these similar storylines with the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. The Viking Raiders are not being booked as a strong competitive force that they should be. The Street Profits are not being booked as the serious, uh, great in-ring talent that they should be. Although they are entertaining, they, have, like, they love to have fun with the crowd. Uh, I think we need to dial it back a little bit, let them get in the ring, put on some shows, and let them be, uh, let them represent the, the, the Raw Tag Team Division well, because right now, I don't think that WWE is allowing to do, let them do that. I do have to say, besides the greatest wrestling match ever between Randy Orton and, and Edge, I was looking forward to the Raw Women's Title Match between the champion, Asuka, and the challenger, Nia Jax. This match we spoke heavily about on the Backlash pre-show. I spoke with Lopaki from the Botch Finish about this, and we spoke for quite some time about how this match can take place, things that can happen, such as a Kali Saint interference or uh, Nia Jax uh, possibly injuring Asuka. Uh, but this match ultimately failed. Um, I, I think from what we saw at Backlash, we will see the continuation of this storyline possibly at Extreme Rules. Maybe need the inclusion of Charlotte Flair, as we saw last week, uh, now attempting to go after the Raw Women's title. But I do not like Asuka's first title defense as the Raw Women's Champion, especially after what happened with Becky Lynch being given the title, winning the Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, a lot of people say that Asuka was handed the title, but in reality, she won the Money in the Bank ladder match. She earned a, ch a chance at the title with the circumstances regarding Becky Lynch. This was the only possible solution to give Asuka that title. She was not handed anything, she earned that title. She cashed in her money in the bank, so to say. This, as her first defense, I was expecting uh, a clean win over Nia Jax. Uh, even if there was interference, I expected there to be a clean uh, winner. I did not expect a double count out uh, for Asuka's first defense as the Raw Women's Champion. It's just not strong booking, um, at least, uh, compared to what we've seen in the past. Now, I think the biggest problem with Asuka's character is that we expect to see uh, who she was from NXT, and that was the strongest uh, push uh, female character in the last decade. Uh, going undefeated, defeating everybody on the NXT roster, being the NXT champion for over a year. I mean, the most impressive run we could possibly say about any female superstar, maybe even in the history of uh, WWE. But, uh, I think it's the biggest problem with Asuka is that we have such high expectations that we expect to see some sort of NXT or some, some similar run to what she had in NXT. Uh, I don't think that's what we're seeing right now, especially, like I said, her first title defense getting a double count out win. Uh, this is not the way I wanted to see Asuka retain the title. I think she needs to either tap out uh, Nia Jax or have Nia pass out and look strong going into the next few. But I think, like I said earlier, I think we will see 
Asuka and Nia Jax continue, possibly on Monday Night Raw, uh, which I believe we're going to see tonight. We'll see a match between the two, uh, and maybe even see another match at uh, WWE Extreme Rules. Now, overall, I was very, very pleased with the entire night. I was pleased with WWE Backlash. Like I said in the pre-show, a lot of these matches, I was not expecting. There was not one match in the card that I can say I was not interested in. From the pre-show with Apollo Crews uh, retaining his United States Championship over Andrade. I was pleased all the way through uh, to the end of the night. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. The greatest wrestling match in history, Randy Orton defeating Edge. Uh, in a surprise win, I did not predict Randy Orton to win. I predicted an Edge win. A lot of people suggested that Randy Orton would get the win in this match. As he did, we saw a lot of, lot of uh, different uh, pieces of WWE history represented in this match. We saw the night, the, the first uh, part of that, which was the introduction uh, being done by uh, the late, great Howard Finkel. Uh, the MSG Mike dropping down his voice playing, which I believe is from uh, a WWE 2K video game. Uh, we saw the inclusion of different unique camera angles, enhanced audio. Uh, they really went all out to make this the greatest wrestling match ever as they booked. Um, but I wasn't really a fan of the sound effects because we kind of know what the crowd sounds like at the moment uh, with everything happening with COVID-19. We know that the sound is not you know, that loud. So it was kind of, it was a little off for me to see like very minimal people in the crowd and uh, so hearing these loud cheers and boos and this is awesome and all the other chants we heard. Another part that someone uh, pointed out was that commentary was being done yet when they showed commentary on camera, Samoa Joe's mouth was not moving when he was actually talking uh, on the audio. This match was taped, it was edited. Uh, the, the commentary was edited also, so that's probably why you saw uh, or you heard Samoa Joe talking and while he was on camera, his mouth was not moving. Um, there were some little hiccups here and there, uh, but overall the, the match was fantastic. We saw Randy Orton hit a pedigree on Edge. Uh, we saw Edge hit a rock bottom on Randy Orton. We saw some uh, Macho Man and Ric Flair uh, moments when they were chopping each other laying down. It was, it was a lot of, lot of different things that the uh, Ultimate Wrestling fan would really understand and uh, uh, realize. But this was exactly what we expected it to be. In my eyes, it was not the greatest wrestling match of all time, um, but it was pretty damn close. Uh, but I can say it was the greatest wrestling match of the COVID-19 uh, era, and also probably the greatest wrestling match of uh, 2020. Now, I am not here alone to discuss this match. There was someone who wanted to uh, call in and talk about this match a little bit, and that is WWE legend. The coach. Jonathan Coachman is here with me right now. He's going to talk a little bit about what he thought about the Randy Orton Edge match, a little bit about Edge's uh, history with him, and also he's going to plug the angle. So, ladies and gentlemen, I pl please welcome the coach, Jonathan Coachman. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a coach from the WWE. Now, I'm always looking for different podcasts, different smart people, different angles on different subjects. And I got to tell you, I found this latest podcast called The Angle Podcast. So it's kind of two birds with one stone. And anytime something can even remotely have Kurt Angle's name in it, I'm all about it. Now, if you're talking about an Angle Podcast, you also have to go to uh, the different uh, matches that have been going on lately across the wrestling spectrum. And everybody's talking about uh, Edge and Randy Orton and the fact that they have the greatest wrestling match of all time. And... The return of Edge is where I've been focused. I used to travel with this man. Uh, I've got a great deal of respect for Edge. And the fact that he went through what he went through physically to be able to come back in the shape that he's in and have these kind of matches at 46 years old is incredible. It really, really is. You can hear about these and other uh, storylines on the Angle podcast uh, with Joey. Check it out. Help him build his platform. Because more and more, we're going away from the big networks, and there's a lot of smart people that are doing a lot of good, smart work. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Tell them the coach sent you. See you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan Coachman giving his two cents on Randy Orton and Edge. Phenomenal, phenomenal uh, pay-per-view overall, like I said. I want to thank the coach for giving his input and making that short cameo appearance. 
Um, I would like to see him involved more down the line, uh, but only time will tell. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to this WWE Backlash post show, the Angles WWE Backlash post show. We're going to get ready for Monday Night Raw. I know Randy Orton is opening up the show. There are some rumors circulating that Christian may be making his uh, return tonight to kind of get involved with Randy Orton. Uh, there is rumors that Edge has suffered an injury at last night's uh, WWE Backlash pay-per-view. Uh, there are reports of a torn tricep, which can take up to eight months uh, with surgery to repair. I mean, this is uh, if this is true, uh, it's a devastating moment for the WWE, especially having Edge back finally after nine years, his first singles, uh, singles match being back. Uh, but there is so much to look forward to tonight. Uh, on Monday Night Raw. I know a lot of fans complain about it, but I'm ultimately excited. I'm, a, I'm, I'm excited to be a pro wrestling fan. I'm excited to watch Monday Night Raw. And I'm excited really to uh, start the road to WWE Extreme Rules. Uh, we will also be doing a, uh, a pre show for that, I believe it's uh, July 19th, uh, WWE Extreme Rules. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the WWE Backlash post show. Let's get ready for Monday Night Raw. Uh, grab your popcorn, grab something to drink. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee, like I said, the whole night, 11 o'clock. I know we're gonna have uh, one of the matches tonight. Drew McIntyre teaming with the 24-7 champion, r to take on Bobby Lashley and MVP. I'm sure that will be an entertaining match because anything with MVP or anything with r truth is ridiculously entertaining. I wanna thank everybody for tuning in. For now, I'm your host, Joey Carney, and this has been the Angles WWE Backlash Post Show. Enjoy running at Raw.